Now, there are three people with us in the studio who have traversed the length and breadth of the country and also largely in South India, they spent a lot of time ahead of phase one. Pallavi Ghosh, Aman and also Shivani. Shivani is there in Kerala quite extensively. That's another state where the BJP is wanting to break uh, out of. And yet. both of you, Aman and Pallavi, spoke with the Prime Minister in the thick of action and especially at places you were there at a place where never before has a Prime Minister done a roadshow like he did. So, we'll come to Bengal in a bit, but South. How important, how critical it is. Kerala, Shivani, let's start with you and then Aman and Pallavi. Yeah. When we talk about Kerala, when we talk about Tamil Nadu, I think the uh, major narrative is that BJP doesn't have acceptability here. So that certainly has changed and they've managed to kind of grow their acceptability. Around the country, the BJP's acceptability gets a fill-up because of Narendra Modi's acceptability. So what I found on ground was that certainly the Prime Minister is... There is no antagonistic feeling against the Prime Minister himself. And let's face in it... Ke they, in Kerala. Even in Kerala. So, so in Kerala, in Shivani, Kerala, that's course, a significant an shift. No, but, but 2019, it was anti-Modi in Kerala. Kerala was purely anti-Modi, no, the sentiment. Now, so now, if that's shifted now in 2024, that's so a very the, big shift no, for no, the so, BJP. So the big talk in Kerala, one, the left and the Congress were at their throats. Mm. So BJP didn't really have to, you know, uh, do very much in either attacking Pinaray Vijayan's government or Rahul Gandhi-led Congress and the UDF. And that certainly was playing out quite a bit. And in that, uh, you could sense that there was bitterness between them too. Mm. Uh, th th both of them, but not so much against Narendra Modi. And the big factor that everybody in Kerala was talking about. In 2019, UDF got a surge or the Congress swept Kerala because Rahul Gandhi was fighting from Vayanad for the very first time. Everybody was buoyant. He could beat Narendra Modi. Remember, nobody thought yeah. Narendra Modi was going to win a bigger mandate in 2019. And that the Prime Minister of the country was going to be from Kerala. That narrative has deflated for the UDF and the Congress. That narrative, that Philip, that wave is, is no longer and, under and them. And then Pindrai Vision also emerged much stronger thereafter and the left would want to claw yes. back in terms but of stakes. Interesting you mentioned that, Anand, there is a sentiment of anti-incumbency against the left government since 2021 in Kerala. Hmm. How that plays out is interesting. For the BJP, the target is very clear. They've got to chip at both the left and the Congress's traditional vote bases only then can they cross the, that hurdle of 33% vote us, share The two of us hailing, from, hailing from Kerala know that how difficult it is for the BJP to even establish themselves in that area. But you know, it's they've so, got so constituencies thick. where they had 30% vote share and yeah. in constituencies they had 25 plus uh, percent uh, vote share. So for them, the trick is to kind of now finally woo the voter and say they have to cross but the 33%. But have they got the right candidates in those places and given them enough time to, uh, you know, farm that 30% into a 35, 36 well, Percent is a big question. Just, just quick word. Also, there is a with, there, is, a, Kerala, there yeah. is an anti-incumbency against the Congress sitting MPs also, which they yeah. haven't changed at all. So, See yeah. what happened with Trishur Puram there. How much of that will impact the elections around I, the place? I think the BJP's yeah. best chance is probably the Trishur seat. We'll mm. know. We'll know mm. in the exit poll, exit in, poll. In, in exactly an hour <laughs> and twenty minutes from now. Uh, Trivandrum is a high-profile seat because of Shashi Tharoor versus Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Uh, Maybe one Artingal, because Artingal, last yeah. time uh, mm. uh, Shobha Surendran clocked about 30% vote share. This time, yeah. Mr. Murlidhar, who's the union minister, is contesting that seat. So, two or three seats where the BJP is pinning its hopes, uh, at least in Kerala. Uh, but I want to ask both Aman and, uh, and Pallavi. I mean, when the, when the Prime Minister, when the BJP talks about expanding into the east, into Bengal, into Odisha, uh, are, are you seeing that? Or is that just, you know, hype and trying to hope that they will, they will actually, you know, better, let's say, the TMC in Bengal or better than the BJD in Odisha. Uh, the biggest hope, Zaka, I think, of the BJP in this election, and that is what Mr. J.P. Nadda, the BJP president, also told us yesterday, that the biggest gains they feel will come from Bengal and Odisha. South India, with the point Anand was mentioning earlier, see, I think South India, all the five southern states, if you see only 29 out of the 131 seats yes. the last time, if we keep out Karnataka, only four seats in Telangana, rest of the three states were a blank. Yeah. This time you see the difference in strategy has been that BJP is fighting South India firmly in the name of Narendra Modi. If Narendra Modi has done 180 rallies and roadshows across the country, nearly 20% of them have been in South India. Nearly 35 rallies and roadshows. Before that also, Prime Minister has gone on an infrastructure inauguration spree in South India. So clearly BJP is fighting in the name of Narendra Modi in South India. They are hoping that what happened in Bengal 
from 2 to 18 seats in 2019 when nobody gave them a chance. A similar surprise awaits us in South India this time. BJP is supremely confident. The Prime Minister mentioned What is the sense us. you got in Karnataka? Because there, there is talk that the, B, that the INDI alliance will claw back. JDS moving away is not going to help them. Between you and Pallavi, both of you also went to Karnataka quite a bit. So, so you went. So let me ask you that. So Karnataka is obviously a bit of a worry for the BJP because one, the Congress is in power there. And you know, these freebies promise that the Congress has rolled out in Karnataka. We can in the last one and a half years has had an impact on the ground amongst the women voters, the fee bus rides or the money which is being given to women voters hmm. there. This is obviously a sign of concern for the BJP. It was also a factor that BJP maybe did not run a very good government in Karnataka. That is why it was and voted And the out. Andhra Telangana equation, what happens in Andhra Telangana? What's the sense that you're getting? Pallavi? Telangana, well, you know, you have a Congress government over there. So the Congress has a reason to be enthusiastic. But, you know, when I did speak to people who are managing the Telangana Congress campaign and all, they do concede in private that, you know, there are pockets where we feel that the BJP can make an intrusion. And I would say the pretty much the same story in Andhra Pradesh. I mean, Andhra Pradesh also the Jagan Mohan Reddy factor and the alliance between the BJP and the Chandra Babu Naidu. That is also, many feel could work in terms of caste combinations. And BJP is actually almost all over. I mean, the BJP makes it very clear that, you know, there is just no terrain which we should leave untouched. And, you know, uh, there's no myopic point of view. I mean, you know, the Congress and it's interesting because it's the India Front Alliance meeting has just ended and they are saying, you know, we de dissected what we did wrong. I wonder what is it that they realize what they did wrong. But they think like right now, politics abhi ke liye hai, abhi khatam karna hai. But I think the BJP is saying is that we are going to be around here for a long, long time. So is this like a woodpecker kind of an attitude? Yeah, keep yeah. chipping, 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 chipping. chipping. See, uh, yeah. I mean, I can talk about my home state in Bengal. Yeah. I remember there were times when people used to even laugh at the possibility of a BJP entering into West Bengal. <laughs> Today, you talk about Bengal politics, BJP versus the Trinamool Congress. The it's left and the Congress yeah. are just about nowhere. So, so but let me tell me, you've been covering the Congress for a while. Where does the Congress see itself gaining? Because they are the ones really, willy-nilly, who hold the key to this election in a strange sort of way. Yeah. So where is the Congress South. seat? South is what they are banking on. Karnataka okay. they are banking on because of the fact that they feel that the BJP is not going to do well. They are banking a lot on Telangana. Kerala, they don't think the BJP is going to make inroads at all. They are pretty much going to maintain the figures they had the last time so round. So they don't think the left will harm them? The left they don't will think come the left is going to harm them. They are very confident for some strange reason. And also uh, Rajasthan, they are mm -hmm. looking at three to four seats. Um, if you talk to the Congress leaders, they think that in Madhya Pradesh also. I mean, if you talk to the Congress leaders, they're actually going to tell you that, listen, we are going to form the government. So I'm not going to go by yeah, that. But, how, but I think, uh, seriously speaking, South is one area where we think that they can do well. Rajasthan is one or two seats, you know. So it's like, again, woodpecker kind of a thing in a different kind of a way. One or two seats, either or every state, so they feel it's going to notch up their numbers. Many, yeah. many BJP leaders, in fact, have gone on record to say that in states like Haryana, Rajasthan, MP, they could lose a bit. Huh. So many senior BJP leaders, in fact, said it on record that we may not be able to repeat our saturation, but we'll make up for those gains more than enough from the other S states. See, but, but here